You guys, adulting is ghetto. It's too much. What is like to live a rent-free life? Y'all, you know, my husband, he irritated the dog out of me. So this is the shade 46N. We're not talking about you, we're talking about me, okay? Stay focused, stay focused. Oh my God, it's my off-season body. Don't judge me. Girl, that's what you look like. I like my coffee black, wife too. Don't turn this into controversy, it's my boo. I can make a quarter million off a haiku, and I can make another quarter off a times two. All right, that was just what the doctor ordered. Fantastic. So for today, we finished up our book that we were reading, Do the New You by Pastor Stephen. That book, first of all, when it first started off, I was like, yo, I don't like this. Because you know when someone's telling you something that you maybe not necessarily want to hear or you know is true and it's just uncomfortable, yeah. But then by the end of it, I was like, all right, Pastor, I hear you, I hear you. So that was fantastic. I go to Elevation Church here in Charlotte, North Carolina. That is what works for me. I think the thing is, what people have to understand is, people are always, if you think that you're supposed to get spiritually fed, I'll say this, hold on, let me backtrack. A lot of people will say, oh, well, I don't go to this church because they don't spiritually feed me, and X, Y, and Z. Here's my question, though. I think some people fail to realize that if you are just going to church on Sundays and you don't have a relationship with God, you're not doing anything in between, you will never be spiritually fed, first of all. Every sermon ain't always going to be for you. That it, it does go that way sometimes. However, comma, you need to make sure that you are more so focusing on a relationship with Christ versus the religion or the church, like the church and the community. Yes, absolutely. That is important. But you got to make sure that you first of all have a relationship with Christ. And then secondly, it's just so important to be in a setting in a church that fits best for you. What might be a turn off for me might not be a turn off for you. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I know a lot of people like have turned their noses up when it comes to mega churches and trust, trust me I understand as someone who goes to elevation there are some things that I don't like about it a hundred percent I will be the first to say that however for me personally whenever I go I get the word the word is from the Bible the word is the word and that's what keeps me coming back so this is your sign to do what works, works best for you and your spiritual needs and where you are in your life. And it is so difficult to find that. So when you are able to find that, please like, you know, hold on to it, but then, you know, treat it like everything else. There's no per perfect marriage. There's no perfect church. There's no perfect job. Like perfection does not exist. So go, go where works best for you and your spirit. That was fantastic. We're gonna read another book, and I was talking to um, the leader of the group, Miss Tony, who I absolutely love. She is definitely someone like I, I have been praying to just be in community with someone like her. She is, you know, just a wise older woman. Like it's given that Titus two energy, which that is something that I. <laughs> have been yearning for and I just love and appreciate her so much I talked to her about some things that God has been pressing down on me on and she just spoke spoke and poured into me and just gave me gave me a lot of words of encouragement that I needed um it's something that I'm working on y'all will see it soon hold tight hang on Marilla's calling me hello dang it he caught me nothing infuriates me more well it, it's not that deep but it's something that god gonna have to soften my heart on like if i'm on my way home from somewhere and marilla or my mom calls me can you stop and get this it's like i just want to go home jesus i just want to go home all right back home it is now 2 35 let's hang out with low a little bit y'all i'm tired um Period feels are real. I'm gonna honor that body. I'm gonna take a nap and then I'm gonna go to the gym. But before, I wanted to pop in and show you my face because guess what? That content for the brand, that's not getting, I'm gonna do everything tomorrow because I'm just like, man. Day two for me on my period, it's just always like the toughest. One is always, one is hit or miss. Either one is I'm okay or it's horrible. Yesterday I was okay. Day two though is always count on it, but I haven't had to block my face. I honestly forgot 
that I had the skin tint or the perfect tint, whatever they call it on. So, so far it's, it's a go. So I'm gonna go lay down. Do you know what's not fun or ideal? Let me tell you, let me tell you, check-ins on your period. It is just, it, it's, you know, but it is what it is. Things to know when you're checking in on your period, you are holding water. So therefore, this number that you see on the scale is not a true reflection of really what's going on. The scale is up and will always be up when you are on your period. So let's go do these check-ins. I'm still getting used to posing with hair. Um, not gonna lie. I don't like it. However, I need to get over it. Let me make myself clear. I love the way my hair looks. I just don't like posing with the hair because I'm used to being free. So let's go check in and do some posing. And then here's the look of someone else who gets to live here rent free. Mm -hmm. He's a sweet boy living the good life. You enjoy that, okay? You enjoy that. Big as a boat. Ah! All right. Y'all know I've been on a serious nail journey. I decided I would give it one more try on my own and then it made me make an attempt to find someone else. Anywho, I love the way that my nails look. I love this color. I'll make sure I link everything down below, but it's just like, I'm very basic. I'm very simple. I'm not asking for much. It's like a neutral, like pinky translucent because I don't do like SNS or get um, acrylic or anything. Like these are just my real nails. My nails grow fast, have always grown fast. So I took off the gel polish, which kind of, it was a little rough because I had some layers on there from when she did one color and decided not to take all of it off previously. And then basically I had some dip powder and then I had gel on top of it so I had to work a little bit harder to get it off um I just use I have like my own little nail drill and all these little nail tools from Amazon but these colors are all basically like transparent but pinky tones which is definitely my vibe so yeah I like this so I have a feeling now that I'm just going to be doing my own nails again because let me save myself the coins and most importantly the headache then also while I'm doing my nails, I'm watching this vlog, Real Life with Sheila. So remember how in my um, previous video I was talking about how I came across vloggers in their 40s, 30s, and that's what inspired me to start doing like life in my mid-30s? Well, Miss Sheila here is a vlogger. And she is in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. She just, well, she moved from, I believe, was it Texas that she said? Somewhere on the West Coast all the way to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So that right there is a culture shock within itself because if you've ever been to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, then you just know. And that's no shade if you're from there. But I'm, listen, I'm a Carolina girl, so I know. However, she's in her late 50s and she is vlogging her life in her late 50s. And I am so here for it. Like, yeah yes ma'am so go follow her she don't know me but go follow her because i love this nails done and i am so happy so so happy it's little things in life right so about these check-ins water buffalo but we'll talk about that in a moment let's go do this try on haul i'm glad i waited until today because as you can see we got sunshine let's go so of course i cleaned my space to do my content and then we got this guy just chilling in the middle of the floor and he needs to get up and he has just parked the funny thing is there's a bed over there 
there's a bed right there, but yet you choose to lay in the middle of the floor. I'm gonna need for you to get up, Caesar. Caesar. He's so disrespectful. Caesar. Caesar P. Caesar. Ugh, give me your big old head. You need to get up and get out of my way. And, and yes, 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 you don't even like being on camera. What, what's up? Lay down. Santa Key. Coming in here looking all deranged. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this with Caesar in the way because he's not budging and I don't have time to fight with him. So, all right, the first two pieces, this one and the next one, I got these over the fall time. And when I, last time I checked, they were still available. However, the trend for this whole haul situation are gonna be these Momentum Seamless Shorts. The reason why I like these are because the seam, they're seven inches, okay? So, one thing about me, I cannot and will not ever be the girly with the short shorts. Yo, I can't have my cheeks out, okay? The only time cheeks need to be out for me is when I'm on stage. Outside of that, don't nobody need to see my cheeks. I, I just, and then I don't understand how we're like lifting and doing leg day and squatting with the, again, if that's your ministry, cool. But for me, there is nothing more frustrating. It reminds me of how like in college when I used to club and it would be ice cold outside, but we still had the mini skirts on and you going like this all night long because every step you take, your skirt coming up. And so now you're like an idiot. Yeah, I'm not trying to be doing this number all day throughout the gym. So my favorite things about these are, first of all, 5'8 girly, 160-ish pounds is where I've been hanging out at. Um, glutes are gluting and when I bend over naturally, no matter what you're wearing, you're squatting, you're moving around, especially on a leg day, everything's going to come up, right? So even with me doing squats with these, even if they come up a little bit, we're still covered. We're still secure and, and, and they are high waist. I love a good high waist. I have to have high waist because these days, um, the ratios, the ratioing. So my waist has been maintaining, thank God. Waist is staying small. However, we gotta have room for the glutes. So I like that this is high waisted, stays on the waist, doesn't go anywhere, and it is long enough. For the shorts, I get the medium, and then this top, top is a small, and it does have like a little bra in there. However, if you are someone who needs more support, you can put on another bra. I don't need any support because ain't much to support here. So this is the first one. And like I said, I got this last fall. All right. So again, same shorts, multiple colors. However, now we're getting into my favorite sports bra of life. I have these, I think I have at least 10 colors of these. So if you know me, you know I am a neutrals girly. However, I do like to venture off in a pop of color every now and then. And I love, love, love this color. Again, you can see how nicely everything fits here. So nice and tight on the waist. This is what the bra looks like on the back. Again, if you are someone who needs extra support, this might not be enough for me. It's more than enough support. My top, um, my sports bra, I get in a size medium and I do a size medium like now and even when I am in prep just simply because lats, we need room for lats. Um, for my bottoms in prep, I, I'll rock out my mediums as long as I possibly can. But then eventually like I do have, I have like two pairs, like two black pairs that are smalls, but they're a different style. They're still long, but they're not like the ripped the rib situation here, but yeah, this is what it looks like. And I love this color. Y'all might have seen me wear this in a couple of vlogs before because like I said, I got this last fall. So now we're gonna jump into the new new. Okay, so my guy Caesar still ain't letting up. Oh, you gonna get up out? You're gonna move now? Are you gonna get on the middle of the floor? Or are you mad because I'm in your way? What, what, are we, what are we doing? Oh, you, you gonna park right here. 
Okay, <laughs> so, excuse me. <laughs> this is our next color here, this cute little green moment again, same moment up top, tuck the tag in, girlfriend, with the seamless high waist shorts. Get your life. Now for the next ones, it's going to be the sports bra and the shorts in different colors. So I love this color because it reminds me of my suit color from when I won my pro card. And then also, let's address something right here. Like I said, no boobies, right? Tittyless crew. I think some athletes feel that in order to compete or in order to do well, you have to have a breast augmentation. That is not the case. Um, Laura Lee, killing it, doesn't have a breast augmentation. Vanya, killing it, doesn't have a breast augmentation. Phoebe, killing it, doesn't have a breast augmentation. All three of those bikini athletes are Olympians. So please do not feel that in order to compete in bikini or any division or in order to do well, you have to have a breast augmentation. Get a breast augmentation because you want to not in the name of competing. And also, the judges, the judges are not gonna mark you down for not having boobs, okay? I'll say this, I have seen a lot of athletes in a lot of shows, girls with breast augmentations and girls who don't have them. I have also seen athletes who started off not having it, and then when they get it, it totally wrecks their physique. Understand that, yes, it can help add shape, but it's not necessary. But also at the same time, it can hurt you. I've seen some girls on stage where they come on and all I can see are boobs. I see nothing else but boobs because maybe they went too big or maybe it was just not a good augmentation whatsoever. Again, I'm no, obviously don't have any breasts. I don't have a breast augmentation. Is it something that I had thought about? Absolutely. And this was something that I had thought about before I had even started competing. And then once I started competing and I saw how tiny my chest got, I was like, oh yeah, like this looks horrible. But then probably a few months ago, I made the decision. I was like, you know what? I don't think that's anything I wanna do. I might change my mind again, who knows, but as of right now in this moment, I'm not interested. However, from what I've seen in my own research, I have found that when girls get the breast augmentation under the muscle, it looks way better than over the muscle. Again, that's just my thought process. That's Amber P philosophy. However, do not get a boob job just for competing. Get it because you want it if that's something you've been thinking about for quite some time, or if you don't, don't, you don't have to. The fact that Caesar is still in here says a lot about him and his personality. Any other time, he would not be in here, but because he knows I got something to do, because he knows I'm trying to show y'all something, he just, you know, but it's fine, whatever. I have these relaxed fit shorts for just weekends, lounging around, running errands, whatever the case may be. Like y'all, sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of the times, I don't want to be sucked in tight. I just want to chill, so I like these. I got mine in the size medium. They're not crazy, crazy short, but here's the thing. If my shorts are gonna be a little bit shorter, they gotta be loose. I can't have short shorts and they be tight, mm -mm, baby, you gotta pick a struggle. It's kind of like, th this, this is my philosophy, I've always been this way, okay? If I'm showing a little midriff, then I don't need to be showing any legs or have on anything super, super short. 
or if I do have on shorts, no midriff. That's just how I roll. I, I would put a shirt on. I wouldn't just walk around like this out and about in public, but just so y'all can see the shorts. So I have them in this cream color. It's kind of got like these little, not polka dots per se, but just like little splashes of blue, purple, orange, super, super cute. And then I also have them in a black pink. Okay, just kidding. I can't remember if I said I got these in a small, not a medium. I didn't get the medium because the medium was way too big in the waist. I know once I drop a little bit away, I know like once I drop like five pounds, these won't fit as snug. I hold all my body fat here and here. When people are like, how are you able to maintain like a tight core or abs? I'm not. That's just genetics. All the body fat is up in here. So I know once we get off a little bit of that, they won't fit, they'll fit looser. But the medium was way too big in the way. So that is it, y'all. Do you see why I love DSG? Comfortable, affordable, and it fits me. Like I have such a hard time finding good quality, just fitness, apparel, because there's so many brands to choose from. And then it's like, okay, I wanna get this, but then I get it, then the quality is not what I thought it was, or it just doesn't fit my body right, especially like when you're a taller girl, like you already know the vibe, things are just a little bit different. So hopefully that'll help you go check out DSG. Y'all know I'm putting it out there one day, DSG is going to sponsor me. I ride for their clothing. I've been wearing their sports clothing since, what, 2021, lowers it too. I keep purchasing it. Everything holds up. I still have a lot of my pieces from 2021 that I still wear. They're still in good tack and we roll them. So, all right. Let's talk about these check-ins, girl, and the prep before the prep. All right. So let's talk. Well, first of all, last night, <laughs> after I woke up from my nap, Lo and I went to the gym and we just hit back and shoulders. Then we had a little date. So we've been making it a point every week to just go out on a date and dating doesn't always have to be eating. So since we live, you know, in the city, we'll go right around the corner, walk around uptown, see the sights, whatever the case. It was a vibe. It was so nice outside. Didn't record because I didn't want to. I wanted to be with my man. Okay. So that was last night. <sighs> check-ins. So here are my check-in photos. When I tell you, baby, we big as a boat, we big as a boat. Um, it's so funny because I knew my period was coming, but I was feeling so good at the beginning of the week. I was feeling good on Monday. I was like, okay, I was even feeling decent yesterday, but baby, this morning I got humbled. Okay. Humbled. Day two is always like the day when like the floodgates open for me and yeah, yeah. So I understand what's going on. I understand that, first of all, I'm at a higher body fat than I'm used to. However, I'm cool with it. I've embraced it. I feel like for the first time in my life, I look like a grown woman. So my body dysmorphia is when I look in the mirror, I see like that skinny, skinny, scrawny girl. So that's, I'm the opposite. So now when I look in the mirror, it's different. It's daunting, but I'm like, I look grown, okay? I look like a woman. Let me find out Amber P got a little bit of curve. So that's that. However, comma, now I'm like, but uh, I'm gonna be starting prep at a higher body fat percentage. So that's got me a little bit nervous. However, I know, I know I put on more muscle. So that kind of, you know, takes the, a little bit of the stress off of me. So right now, like I said, I've just been treading in that, like that 160-ish. So 160 period, 162, I'll bounce around like 161.3. 161.1 160 that that's just the range that I've been in so that's where I'm at but understanding that okay my stage weight is 134 so we, we got a lot of work to do and I'm hoping that I could be a solid 135 on stage I think 135 will be good um again we won't know till we start cutting down Maybe 136. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But um, it's a look. It's not about the number on the scale. The scale is a tool. It gives you an idea of part of the idea of what's happening. But of course, the eyes are always going to do all for you. But for me, 
I was bummed out because technically the plan was for me to have already been competed. So my first show of the season was supposed to be Charlotte Pro and then go from there. However, life was just not allowing for that to happen. Um, I've spoken on my 2023. 2023 was a rough year and was by far the roughest year of my life. Started off rough AF out the gate. I talked about it a little bit, just, you know, marriage, we gonna make it, Lord was going on, all of that. And then by May, things really started turning around, got better. Summertime, everything was good. Pro card, you know, focusing on that. And then even after I was done competing and going into off season, everything was good. But I don't think I gave y'all, in fact, I know I didn't give y'all like 100% details of what happened with Marillo. So in September, one day he came home and he was saying that he just had this like a knock here and he didn't know what it was. I said, okay. And I'm gonna keep it a book. Low is dramatic, okay? like dramatic AF and I felt bad because whenever he tell me like he don't feel good I don't believe him I, I just it's not that I don't believe him it's that I never take it serious because I know it is not as intense as he says it is because everything is a novella everything is a novella basically novella are novellas are like the um Latino um dramas stories younger than the restless okay that I know my man, all right? Amen, amen. So I'm thinking, oh, this is just a novella moment, whatever, we're gonna be fine. We were not fine. So I'm looking at it, looking at him, said something to my mom. She said, just go ahead and go to the ER. I said, okay, cool. So I managed to get him to, come on, let's go, let's go. So we walked to the car, get in the car. He goes, you know what? It's cool, I can hold off until tomorrow. So at this point, I'm annoyed, but I know I need to take a step back. Don't always be so blah, 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 and just let him make his own decisions. Okay, cool. So time goes by. I go into the bathroom and he's just standing there in the mirror and I can see his eyes like getting water, watery. And I said, what's wrong? He turns his face and I kid you not, this thing is as big as a golf ball now. So at this point, I'm like, nope, we're going. We're going right now. So he was in the hospital. They do all these scans on him. They're like, okay, you know, it's not tumor. It's not cancer. We don't know what's going on. We think it's an infection. I'm thinking, okay, cool. Give us medication. Let's go home. No, he ends up staying there for, was it four days? Yeah, he was in the hospital for four days. They were treating him for, for septus. They were trying to make sure that he didn't get an infection. So now he's got all these antibiotics, X, Y, and Z. He's out the hospital. I'm like, okay, cool, because towards the end of the week I had to go to Arizona for Rising Phoenix so the night before Rising Phoenix Marilla and my mom we're in Costco and he starts complaining about his legs he's like my legs don't feel right and I'm like what do you mean your legs don't feel right so I'm thinking maybe he's just really really tired side effect from the meds whatever the case may be get him home and all of a sudden he starts screaming he can't feel his legs so now I'm freaking out because I don't know what's happening so I rush him back to the emergency room and I walked in there I said listen we ain't about to sit in here all night he just got discharged not even a full 24 hours let him back in because something's not right they check him they don't see anything. They give, they gave him some morphine and he was just like, he was feeling good then. I was like, Lord have mercy. So then we got back home. I'm nervous. I'm like, do I go to Arizona? Do I not? He was like, no, good people are waiting on you. So very stressed out doing that show. However, everyone was so kind and so gracious. Fast forward October, we're going in to do a biopsy to check to see what it is. Doctor does the biopsy and says, okay, well, I don't think it is, you know, like cancerous or anything just because I don't think it's a tumor because of the way that it's going in. It just seems more infectious. Okay. We come back on my birthday, get the results. And all I wanted on my birthday was to have results of good news. Came back and all of a sudden he was like, um, yeah, it's a tumor and we're not a hundred percent sure if it's cancerous. I'm like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. So this whole time, my only hope, well, the thing that was holding holding me together was we know it's not cancer and it's not tumor. So now we know it's not a tumor and it's not cancerous. So I'm just like, how do we go from that to this? Oh my goodness. So now they're saying, okay, well, we want to make sure, let's schedule a surgery. Fine, whatever. We schedule a surgery. The surgery is in December. So in November, Marillo got a new job. So we're like, this is perfect, fantastic. He goes, he puts in his notice at his job, and then Three days later, he starts at the new job. He goes in for training. He passed the driving test because Marillo installs and fixes appliances for a living. That's what he's been doing for like longer than we've been together for like 14 years. He's a handyman. He can fix anything. He drives like those large box trucks all throughout the mountains and all that. So 
pass the driving test, no problem. He gets there, they pull him and two other gentlemen and say, hey, we're so sorry. And I'll say it, this was UPS. It was UPS. Hey, we're so sorry. We use a third party hiring system and there is a glitch in the system and you guys don't have a job. So now it's the holidays. I'm back at Macy seasonally. We have this news with his health and now he does not have a job. All right. December comes. Surgery. Through, first of all, the, the whole scheduling, everything, it was just hellacious. It, it, it was just... I'm not even going to get into all of that. Three days before, we get an email saying, hey, um, insurance didn't cover it all, so you guys still have a balance of 3 k that needs to be paid before the surgery. And this is when I crumbled because now I'm like, wait a second, wait a second. He doesn't have a job. Insurance isn't going to cover it. You're telling me three days prior to before the surgery that we need to have 3 k It's the holidays. We're hanging on by a thread. And that is when I crumbled and hit rock bottom. I had started prep. I believe the week of nationals. And then once everything started trickling down, I was like, Jay, she said, yeah, no, no prep for you. I'm pulling you. And I was like, yeah, because I, I can't, I'm like hanging on by a thread right now. And it was so frustrating because typically for me, I don't know about y'all when it comes to prep, it takes me like a good three weeks to like mentally get locked in with like my tracking, you know what I mean? But that was the first time where I was mentally mm, locked in. Let's go. I'm ready. However, because life, was what it was there was no way that I could prep um that is when I just like I wasn't training I was anxiety ridden I had a headache for like two weeks straight I was brain foggy I couldn't form a sentence like it was just really really bad for me so therefore I was not able to obviously start prep that way and so as time went on I started thinking about it I said hold on Marilla I said because if this were truly cancer or a tumor the antibiotics that you've been on wouldn't make it go down. So now I believe this was a blessing in disguise that we did not go for the surgery because the surgery would have been like a facelift and they would have had to cut his face open. And so therefore now fast forward, you know, second opinions, we're still waiting to hear from one more doctor because we just want to go get everything checked out again because it hasn't like we really, it was just an infection, but it's a blessing in disguise because had we had given them 3K that we did not have, and they cut his face open just to tell me it was nothing. Of course, I would have been relieved. However, comma, that's 3K for you to cut my man's face open and there's nothing there. Anywho, that's why life was so difficult for me towards the end of the year and honestly, the beginning of the year. And I'm finally at a place now where I'm coming out of burnout and I'm going to have a whole video on that. But here's the thing. So right now I am in the prep before the prep. So the prep before the prep is by far the most popular podcast episode on Alexis is a nice podcast, a girl gangs podcast. Basically a lot of athletes when they're new, whenever they make the decision that they want to compete, they think that they can just go ahead and start cutting right then and there. No, 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 no. You got to adapt to the lifestyle. You got to learn nutrition and all those things right now for me, the prep before the prep is a health phase. So I have been in my health phase for where are we March? Let me see. One, two, three, four. I'm going on five weeks of my health phase. And I believe we're going to do, I think I might have three or four more weeks of that. Basically, had I sent my check-ins to my coach, I let her know, hey, uh, I'm on my period. However, I feel stuffed and I feel big as a boat. Um, This is looking sloppy. I understand what's going on. However, here's how I feel. She responded back. Yep, you're on your period. Um, Four more weeks of your health phase. So basically, shut up, eat your food, train hard these next four weeks, and we will reassess. Get my blood work because I was feeling awful, like God awful, no energy, just drain, couldn't get up, couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, nothing. Got my blood work um, deficient in vitamin D and I had no testosterone. So that's why. I felt like crap. I feel amazing now. So I talked about it before. I do HRT to help get my testosterone in a balanced place. This is not testosterone to like send me over the edge to help me build muscle. Like, no, this is like to get me balanced so that I can be a functioning human being of society. Y'all know I'm an honest, transparent person about that. And it has been like, it, it helped me because the way that I was feeling, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. no ma'am, no ma'am, no 
ma'am. As far as any other supplementation, because I'm sure y'all are wondering, um, I talked about it a little bit in the Girl Games podcast, just things I had to do differently for my last prep. And for me personally, I always tell y'all, especially if you're a new athlete, you have no business getting into supplementations, PEDs, or the case of me, because you haven't maxed out. You don't even know if you like it. And it is a risk. I tell people, don't do it. Like, don't. However, I understand why people do. For me, I had to make decisions as far as how I was going to recover. It wasn't even a matter of, for me, oh yeah, let me build muscle. It was just kind of like, I don't recover good at all. I need a sense of recovering just to help me maintain. So that's why I went that route. I did it uh for eight weeks. It was, yeah, eight weeks all the way up to Junior Nats. And after Junior Nats, we pulled it because eight weeks was long enough. But then also because Tyler told me that uh, we needed to watch my upper body. I was bussing on stage, okay? So I have not utilized anything since Junior Nats. That was last June. So 10 months, I don't use anything in my off season because I don't want to and because I don't need to. Some people do like to cycle on and off things throughout the whole year. That's their prerogative for me and my household. That's not anything that I'm interested in and nor do I feel that I need to do that. Um, when it comes to bodybuilding, you got to draw a line in the sand and you got to stand firm on what you will and what you won't do. Of course, as things go on, you're allowed to change your mind. For me personally, I'm not putting anything in my body that I do not want to put in my body. And that's just how I am. Um, you do what's best for you. I am not someone that's going to be blasting myself with a lot of drugs. Like I'm, I'm just not doing it. 10 months not using nothing, just out here doing my thing as per usual. And the reason why I'm not someone who teeters or is afraid to, you know, talk about like supplements or PDs, and I'm, this is not something that I am well versed in either. So don't come to me for that. But it's just for the sole purpose of I know the majority of newer athletes just want to know what's possible naturally. You know what I mean? I feel like we're doing new athletes a disservice. And I know a lot of people would probably disagree with me on that, but that's okay. Um, I feel like we're doing newer athletes a disservice because at the end of the day, all they are trying to do is figure out, okay, what is possible for me? Because are there some who can do it naturally? Yes, absolutely, and do well. However, that is going to be a situation of a genetic anomaly. I'm not saying that it's impossible, and I'm not saying that you have to do these things. I'm going to be the first one to tell you, baby, don't do it. You know, like do as I say, not as I do type situation. But I do feel that we're doing athletes a disservice because it's not, it's just not being real. It's, it's, it's not, and I'm not saying that you got to put all your business on front street. I would never say that because I understand people have jobs to maintain it and whatever the case may be. However, it's just kind of like, if you are someone who is choosing to share your journey and you have people watching you and you have people like coming to you for advice and asking you questions, then at that point, I do feel like you do kind of have the duty to not put everything out there, but at least let them know, hey, this is part of the sport. This is something that happens. And then let people go from there with making their decisions. Like I said, I just, for me personally, it's not something that I like to dive into just because I, I'm not, that's not what I'm well versed in. However, comma, to sit here and act like, oh yeah, you know, bikini girls get like this naturally and blah, blah, like, mm-mm, mm-mm. So, Again, judge me kindly. Just got to look out for the girlies who are really trying to figure this thing out because I was once there and I could not find an answer. And I know I would have appreciated someone just being straight up like that. Like another line in the sand for me as well. I understand like right now, because I am starting off at a higher body fat, that yeah, things are probably going to take longer and I might have to do a little bit more cardio than I'm used to. However, I'm not doing more than an hour of cardio. This is just me. Um, the most I have ever done since I've been with my coach is 45 minutes. And my coach knows if we got to do an hour of cardio or you feel I need a more than an hour of cardio, if that's the case, I can do that for three weeks max. After that, if I got to do an hour of cardio for more than three weeks, baby, we picking another show because just know I like the gym. 
I'm not obsessed with the gym. I do not like doing two a days. I have things to do. I have a job that requires me to be standing up on my feet, moving around. I ain't doing nobody's hour plus cardio for months and for weeks and weeks on end. That's just me. Have I done it before? Yes. 2020, I was like at an hour and a half of cardio. And that was insanity. Now, I understand for different people, different strokes, different folks. But for me, that is one of the lines that I've drawn in the sand for me as far as like, I'm not putting this in my body, nor am I doing over, I'm not doing an hour of cardio for an extended amount of time. So that's that on that. And then honestly, at the beginning of the year, I had so many emotions just around me competing. I honestly didn't know that I didn't know if I was going to compete and I thought I was just going to be done all together. And so I kept going back and forth and back and forth with it. And I talked to my coach about it. And then Marilla was the one that set me free. He said, why would you make such a rash decision right now? Maybe it's just that you're tired and I was still tired. Maybe you just, you know, your emotions and everything was just up and down. And so he said, prep. And then if you get into it and you don't want to do it, don't. And I was like, you know what? Work. Okay, Pastor P, that, that'll preach. That's good. So I um, I will start prep at some point. Um, I don't have a show in mind. The game plan is to be ready sometime in the fall. However, comma, I also understand that because we're starting off with higher body fat, that there is a chance that I might not. Like I might get going and I might be like, hey, I can't push anymore because I'm going to honor and listen to my body. I'm not here to push myself to a crazy extreme and the reason why I don't want to push myself like too 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 crazy over the edge is because I do plan on having a child at some point and so for me when it comes to bodybuilding and preserving my body to be a mom I'm gonna preserve my body to be a mom because at the end of the day that is always and way more important than getting on the stage so that's what I am being mindful of it's like yes bodybuilding is extreme however it's just a matter of how extreme are you trying to go I am not I do not have a desire to go more extreme than I did to get my pro card. And so that's my line in the sand. If I have to go more extreme than that, then that's it. I could both done not doing it. So that's where I'm at with it. We're just going to, I'm just going to see what my body does. I'm going to keep it a buck. I'm really scared. My body's not going to respond. I don't know why. And maybe I shouldn't like keep telling myself that, but I'm like, what if my body doesn't respond? If my body doesn't respond, then my body doesn't respond. And we don't prep. And guess what? We will live. So we just going to wait and see. We ain't going to stress this thing out. But uh, yeah, that's that. That's all I got for y'all. I hope you enjoyed today's video down below in the comments. Let me know. Are you in prep? Are you an off season or are you not even a bodybuilder? You're just here for the vibes and the entertainment. Let me know. I appreciate y'all watching. Keep it simple and cast one more net.